And so I said, okay, you want listings, but you go after buyers. Why? I'm scared of rejection and mean people. So every single lead gen activity does nothing but create a list of people for you to call. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Caroo! He is an investor, a speaker, and soon to be remembered, in my opinion, as a legend in the industry. The cool thing about what he was doing was he was documenting everything. Like he would post his calls, his work he was putting in, the strategies, he was sharing everything. Every single little thing works, okay? Because you're not gonna push everybody through the funnel, okay? You're not, you're not gonna get everybody to close today. It's not gonna happen. Email is gonna hit 90% of the people in your database. You don't own the database. You don't own your following on social. And you can't make sure all your clients are there watching your stuff. You guys have situations that are very interesting to your clients in your database. When you show up to a list appointment, you should be like looking around like, why are you selling this place? This is amazing. Ricky, what's up, man? Hey guys, how are you? Doing great. How are you doing? Really good. Good, good. Yeah, I appreciate you jumping on the call. I've been following your stuff for a while and been doing the handwritten letters and cold calls and all that stuff and on a team out here in Colorado. So figured I'd spread the uh knowledge to everybody else on here so yeah man so um so you make you writing the letters and then call in after the letters yep yep it's not so really had... a cold we don't really consider that a cold call right yeah or what or, or what, is, what is a cold call let's define that yeah i mean i guess that's true i mean it's definitely a little it's warmer since i've sent the sent the letter yeah but uh what what would you say the definition of a cold call is in general I guess just calling somebody who doesn't know who I am. Right. Right. And so agents don't want to do that, right? They're scared to do that, correct? Yep. So what do they do instead? Buy Zillow leads and do all the other stuff to get around it than talking yeah. to people. So let's just take Zillow leads, for example. Okay. When Zillow, when you get a Zillow lead, what do you got to do? Call and talk to the person. Right. And then when you do, have you ever talked to him before? Nope. Okay. So you just said the definition of a cold call is calling somebody you never talked to before. Right. So I'm trying to figure out how that's getting around cold calls when it's literally the same thing you just defined. Yep. I'm not coming at you. I'm just like trying to make a point that guys, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Um, it's funny because I did a, a video, I did a training last week and, um, I, uh, I said, you know, you, you guys want listings, right? I mean, you know, is there, is there anybody in the call? You can put it in the comments. Is there anybody on the call that would rather have 30 active listings or 30 active buyers? Would you rather have, well, just to say, if you, if you, if you'd rather have buyers, I'd love to hear from you. I don't think I'm going to see anybody that says buyers. Okay. So let's just say hundred percent of you would rather have listings than buyers, but there's probably, I'm not saying combination. I'm saying one or the other, right? One or the other, you don't get the, you don't get both. Okay. If you got one or the other, what would you want? And it's funny because there was like 400 comments because there was a thousand agents on the zoom and there's 400 comments listings. And like, it's funny because it's a combination. There was like two or three that said both. But nobody said buyers. So then I was like, well, okay. Why are 90% of you doing 100% buyer-driven activities? Why are you not going after listings if, in fact, that's what you want? And keep in mind, I never turned down a buyer ever one single day in my life. I just don't go after them. They're going to come to you naturally, organically. Sellers that sell and then buy. People that want to buy your listings and referrals. Sphere of influence, whatever. And so I said, okay, you want listings, but you go after buyers. Why? I'm scared of rejection and mean people. I said, okay, well then put in the comments right now. If you've ever had one of these buyers that you spent all this time, money, and energy to get, who was mean to you or rejected you? 400 more comments. Yep, happens all the time. These buyers are mean to me and reject me all the time. So let me get this straight. You want listings, but you don't go get them because you're scared of people are going to be mean and reject you. So you spend time, money, and energy to go get buyers who are mean to you and reject you. Your business is confused. We need to line up what we want 
with what we're getting. Because at the end of the day, it's the same thing, guys. And I'm not coming at you with some cold call talk because I'm not. Like, I can break down the fact that it's the same exact thing. You know, like 10% of the sellers you talk to are mean and, you know, reject you. Which, by the way, rejection is just them telling you what they want. You know, go with it. But 10% of this buyers you call are going to be mean and reject you. It's the same thing. Same thing. So every single lead gen activity does nothing but create a list of people for you to call. Think about it. You know, open houses, Facebook leads, Zillow, uh, YouTube, um, um, you know, cold calling, uh, sphere of influence, networking events, like name something that's a legion activity that that isn't designed to try to help you create a list of people for you to sit down and call. Am I am 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 I am I crazy? Nope. Okay. So that's the end result of every single legion activity. No matter what, you're going to have to call people for the first time anyway. 10% of the people are going to reject and and be mean to you anyway. Why not go for what you want? So I'm just trying to help you guys maybe, you know, come to the realization that your perspective on your business in terms of this whole buyer versus listing thing is completely backwards. It's the same thing. So let's just start there. How you guys doing? Literally. Uh, we can all this. go home <laughs> after that. Thank you, man. That was Literally. amazing sit around and think about this stuff all day long. Um, I eat, sleep and breathe this stuff. Um, so I've been an agent for over 20 years now. I did a thousand deals as a single agent. I was the number one Remax agent in Alabama for a while. And, uh, now I'm just a coach. I travel, I speak a lot, do a lot of social media and I'm more of a digital marketer now than a real estate agent. And it's, um, it's beautiful because honestly, I mean, you know, your, your journey is about the different chapters, you know, of your journey. You know, we were, I mean, I was a roofer with my dad and then, you know, I got into real estate and, you know, um, lost everything, went back to roofing and worked on an oil rig and stuff. These are different chapters, got back on real estate, realized how to actually be the best agent out there, crushed it. Um, you know, then, then the next chapter, you know, I started writing, speaking, coaching, and I think, I think that it's about that. And I think most agents, their horizon, the horizon that they see is I want to be number one. I want to make a million bucks a year, but they're not even looking past that. They're not even thinking that there's another chapter. They're thinking they may die selling real estate, um, which I watched agents die. I watched them. I watched two agents die from old age. They made, uh, they called for sale by owners and expires till three days before they actually passed away. Watched it with my own eyes legendary agents, um, mentors of mine. It was very eye-opening. Um, but anyway, I've done a lot of things. So, you know, made it lost at a young age, came back number one single agent. I, uh, you know, did it through cold calling. Now I'm like big on social media, uh, wrote books, travel, speak, invest, develop, flip, everything. I've done a little bit of just about anything any of you guys want to accomplish in a big, big way. And so I'm just here to help you. Um, I don't know what, you know, everybody's role is. If you guys are one big team, if you're a brokerage, I don't know what is going on with you guys. But, um, you know, you, you'll you find that I'll tell you every single little thing on my mind about what I think you could do to be more efficient and uh, be more productive. So I can dive into a lot of things, but let's maybe do some Q&A here because I think that's where the most of the value is probably going to be. Yeah, Ricky, I, I watch all of your all of your content, so I'm very familiar with like probably the answers that you'd you'd give. One question that I had was as a team, um, is there something that you would like if you were an agent on a team, is there something you would do? And then the other thing is I know you're like super big in the weekly email and I'm guessing your answer is probably going to be just take you know, take the time to write my own email, but is there, do you think there's a way to leverage the weekly email as a team? Or do you think that's more of a personal thing? Is this one huge team I'm talking to? Pretty much for the most part. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't answer the, what you should do if you're on a team part then, right? 
you can say whatever you want to say. <laughs> Maybe leave the team. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, nah, it's, uh, listen, here's the thing. Every single little thing works. Okay. Like I know guys that built teams that do 8,000 transactions a year. Um, you know, they're basically the CEOs of their own companies now, you know, AKA the team. You know, they've stepped totally out. You know, there's guys running it. They make millions and all that stuff. It works. So that may be what you guys are are doing. Um, for me, since I was never on a team and I just went out there and just made it happen, I find a disconnect between the goal of the team and the goal of the agent. The goal of the agent normally the way I see it is to learn everything they can so they can go on their own. And the, the, the goal of the team is to retain them forever. And unless those expectations are set and met and, and, you know, put in place, then it could be super disastrous. But since you've got such a big team here, I guess you've done a really good job of setting expectations and get everybody in the roles they need to play in terms of the weekly email. I think that there's so many like situations it, it just depends on what everybody's roles are. You know, if like it's a team of agents that go out and list and sell properties versus a team of buyer agent section, listing agent division, marketing division, right? If we're kind of around like a brokerage where we're on a team, but we're all listing and selling and we all have our own clients, everybody should do their own email. If it's more of a true team where, here's the buyer agent team, here's the listing agent team, here's the ISAs, here's the, and you have these different divisions, then quite possibly one email, you know, could be the thing, right? Um, so it just kind of depends. There's a lot of dynamics. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, Rick, I mean, we're basically a bunch of individual agents. Uh, I mean, we're all working together and on a team and we do have a bunch of staff that service everyone, but I would talk to us just like we're a bunch of individual agents. Um, doing our own businesses, um, even though we are unified together with the same services uh, helping each of us. So that's probably the way I'd look at it. My name's David, I'm the director of agents over here. So, um, you know, one of the questions I had for you, if you could answer this is, you know, a number of us on the team here um, have uh, a lot of clients that are sitting in the, you know, kind of just the, the purgatory, if you will. Um, and, and it would be maybe helpful if you give us some insights on really the best and most efficient way that you've done is, is in how to push people down and out of the funnel, right? Um, because I think what we do is we kind of sit them there and there are sort of a lot of them that we can probably convert, but we're spending time getting new deals through Zillow or wherever, and then we're letting these guys go and then they get old, right? Um, but they still sit there hovering and we just got to get them all the way down to actually closing and signing, right? And so, yeah, give us some insights on um, how you've been successful in moving people down and out of the funnel. Well, um, these are all buyers. It could be buyer. Uh, I... That's a good question. Um, I, I would say well, yes, the majority Zillow, of them. You know, so when you say Zillow, then I'm thinking buyers. Yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, we do have Zillow listings as well, but those ones aren't probably in the purgatory we're working on those. So yes, I would say buyers mm -hmm. um, is that would be helpful. And then, so my so question you're talking back to how big is your database right now? How many, how many, you know, how many clients? So, you know, generally speaking then, because does every agent have their own database basically like they work their yes. own thing. So, yes. so it's like, okay, how many are in this database, you know, that you have Mr. Or Mrs. Agent. And what do you do to stay relevant um, to this database, right, forever, where they never forget who you are? Because five years from now, one of these Zillow leads that didn't buy liked you a lot, okay? But if you have nothing in place that keeps you relevant to them in five years when they actually buy, they're going to have forgotten about you. You're going to have forgotten about them. And now we did all that work for nothing in the, in the beginning, so we have to have a really simple, scalable, um, you know, system on the back end that that maintains our relevancy with these people that don't buy today, because you're not going to push everybody through the funnel. 
Okay. You're not, you're not going to get everybody to close today. It's not going to happen. You can get some to close, but not all of them. Right. So, um, so first we got to accept the foundation. Okay. When people come into our funnel, how do they never forget about us? So what, what's you guys' answer there? Are you doing anything to maintain relevant relevancy with the clients forever? I mean, in the past, I'd always just call and follow up, but after okay. listening to stuff, the weekly email, I, I mean, makes a lot is that of sense. All, is it, I mean, anybody in the call, is anybody doing anything effective in terms of relevancy with clients that don't buy forever? Um, for me personally, Ricky, I send um, what I call a deal of the week. So it's just a deal that I find just some basic information. That's like, here's some, some perks about the house. If you're interested, just reply, I'll get you all the details. Yeah. Um, and so there's that. And then I will send a monthly market update to everyone I'm attached to. Um, and it's just like, you know, layman's terms, like talking to a fifth grader, explain what's going on in the market and those two things. I understand. So it's a, week and then I have a, up. then I have a, yep. Then I have a VA that follows up with a text message to a certain segment, um, of, of people in the database just checking to see if we can do anything to serve them. That's it. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. So, so the weekly email, is it on the same day of the week? Um, Monday, I send one on Monday and then I send one on Friday if I'm doing it. So two, Mondays, two Mondays week? is, well, sorry, one a week, the one a week and then the monthly, the monthly update. Okay. So monthly updates on a Friday. Okay. Um, and then the, the deal of the week is on a Monday. And then the, the, the monthly ones like the, the first Friday of the month or something like that. Yeah. Okay. After all the data comes out. Got it. So that's really, really smart because email is going to hit 90% of the people in your database. Like they're going to see it in their inbox. So doing that Monday deal of the week email is brilliant. Something that you could add to it is here's the deal of the week. And by the way, here's all the new listings in the area last week. Click here. Just add the new listings of last week. Right. That would just really enhance the value because like they may not be interested in that, but hell and call it like Matt's deal and new listings of the week. Call it the same thing every week. That way people you're branding the subject. Right. Matt's, uh, you know, Matt's deal and new listings of the week or uh, Matt's deal and new listings and the date. No, Matt's deal and new listings and Use a little symbol for and. You want to shorten these these things up as much as you can because when you notice when you're looking at your email, there's only it only goes so far and then it cuts off the words. Matt's deal and new listings date. That way they know it's fresh when they see it in their inbox. That's really smart. Um, so when you think about relevancy with your database, you can't call them all. What if you had 5,000 people? Text is okay. Text is okay, but normally when you do it on a, in a bulk fashion, it's from a different number than your cell phone. So it it it's okay. It's okay. I'm not I'm not sold. You know, um, you should do all these things. By the way, you should call, text, email, uh, you know, direct mail, social media. You should do all of these. It, they're all pieces of the puzzle that fit together. But but guys, email should be the foundation because you know. Social media gets a 5% organic reach versus emails 90. And it's your database. You don't own the database. You don't own your following on social. And you can't make sure all your clients are there watching your stuff. Hardly any of them see your stuff. It's great because it's like this rotating, you know, there's like a new audience every couple of weeks that's kind of coming into your social. You're, you're getting the same amount of views, you know, say you get a thousand views a video. You know, and you just keep getting a thousand views. Well, in three weeks, it's a different thousand people seeing the video than three weeks prior. And it's like this rotation of a new audience every couple of weeks. That's what that's what Instagram and Facebook does. It's called the algorithm. It's called the algorithm. You know, if they don't like your stuff, they're going to quit showing it to them, even though they're following you. Um, but if you can if you can grab their data while they're there, what as soon as they as soon as they follow you, DM them. Say, hey, I see you work at Jesse's or, 
cut hair at this place or I see you're entitled or you're, you're an insurance, you know, I'm a local real estate agent. How are you doing? And see if you can get back and forth to get their, get their email. Now they're in your database. Now they're a real follower. Um, but anyway, um, I'm getting back to David's question here, right down the funnel. Um, the first thing that has to be in place to get them to the closing table is something that's, that keeps them, keeps you relevant to them forever. Cause let, let's just say, what, what do you think the conversion rate is David on this? You know, the, the amount of buyer leads you get or whatever leads, what's the actual conversion rate of people that actually do a deal within, let's just say the first three or four months. Yeah, it's pretty low. I mean, call it three, five percent. Okay. Maybe ten so percent if we're really good closers, but yeah. So we got ninety to nine listen to this guys. Ninety to ninety five percent of the leads that come through are gonna do deals later, not today, later. If you don't have something in place to close those deals, then you're just gonna make two hundred thousand a year forever. You're just gonna close deals off the five or ten percent that are converting now. And you're going to throw away the 90%. You did all that work to get them. And now we're just going to throw them away if we don't have anything to stay relevant with them. Weekly email on the same day of the week forever should be the just complete foundation of your entire business. And when you realize that, that if you, if you put five people a day in that database, 250 working days a year, you've got 6,000 in five years. How big is your business if they've been getting a weekly email on the same day of the week forever? You know what? Every day they're like, every week on that same day, they're like, wow, dependable, consistent, hard worker, honest, professional. Like it does everything for you and, and solidifies your brand to them as a force. That needs to be number one. Like if you're not doing it, then just don't even worry about getting any leads until you get that in place. You're just throwing, you're throwing your business away because 95% of the people you talk to aren't doing a deal today and you don't have anything in place to close the deal later. So therefore you're never going to get to a million bucks a year. This is how you get to a million bucks a year is, is, is closing the 95 in three years. All right. So backing up. Okay. Getting people in the funnel, getting them to close. It's all going to come back to not trying to close them which kind of sounds funny to say it, right? But the whole thing about it is, is when I, when someone inquires on a property or if I'm calling them because their home expired or I have a buyer for their home or may, a, may have a great rental you know, investment property for them, I'm not calling to try to sell that property, to sell them a property, uh, you know, they inquired about a home. I'm not calling them to try to close them on that deal. What I'm doing is, is I'm using that home as a excuse to get into a conversation with them to see if there's a working relationship. Cause there's a million agents guys agreed. There's a million agents. They, they, they can pick, they've got, they've got their pick. So why are they going to pick you just because you, they were a Zillow lead of yours. That's not going to be their good enough reason for them to pick you. Now, it, there's data behind a study that like 80% or so of buyers and sellers go with the first agent they talk to. That's a real stat. So there's a little legitimacy there, but still at the same time, um, it's not just that deal. It's the 10 to 20 deals over the course of your career that you're going to get from that client through repeat business referrals and referrals of referrals that again is going to get you to a million dollars a year. So think about this. The 95% of people who don't do a deal today out of the leads, that's going to get you to a million bucks a year if you've got something in place to stay relevant with them forever. Okay, that's one path to a million. Another path is doing such an amazing job with the ones that do close that they never want to use another agent again in their life. They're going to refer everyone they know to you. And then they turn into 10 to 20 deals over the, over the course of 15 years, right, as – What's the word for it? You know, it it it, it's, it, it, it turns in, it multiplies into that because of the service you gave. Everybody's like, what kind of closing gift? Never really got any elaborate closing gifts. You know, I would give them like gift cards to restaurants. They would go have a nice meal or, you know, uh, 
I gave people like gift cards to Home Depot when they were, you know, finished remodeling a house or something because it, I didn't have to because the, the closing gift was how smooth the transaction went for them dealing with me. And now when a discount broker comes in, they're like, I'm not even going to risk not having the same experience I had with Ricky on this possi possibly saving a couple thousand bucks. I'm willing to pay him whatever he wants because I know what's going to happen. This dude's like clockwork. He answers his phone. He handles situations immediately. Like he took care of me. He threw in a little money to get the deal done. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so bringing it back, <laughs> funnel, closing deals. When you, when you reach out because they inquired about something, use it as an excuse to see if you can really get to know them. How do we get to know them? It's by asking why. Like if your mom wanted to buy a house, if your mom, if your mom called you and said, hey, I'm going to sell and buy this house over here, what's the first thing you would ask to her? Why? Yeah. You wouldn't say, you wouldn't say, well, by golly, our team has sold like 15 uh, houses this week. When can I come by and take a look? That's not what you're going to say, but your mom. You're going to say, why, mom? You love this house. I grew up in this house. Why are you going to sell this house? It's an amazing house. That's what you need to be tell saying to your clients. When you show up to a list appointment, you should be like, looking around like, <laughs> why are you selling this place? This is amazing. And then understand what's happening in their life that's causing them to make the decision to buy or sell something. That's, that's the only thing that matters. Like what property they want to buy, what they want to sell, when they want to sell, how they want to sell, all that stuff is irrelevant. When you understand why they're making the decisions, it's like, and you can't take anything at face value because a seller will say, hey, I'll sell in six months, call me then. And most agents are like, all right, I'll call you in six months. They'll get off the phone and call their buddy and say, oh, I got one. They're going to sell in six months. The whole time, the seller has no intentions of selling six months. This is a defense mechanism. They've, they've told that to so many agents that never heard from them again, and they know it works. I'm going to sell in six months. Call me then. And they know they'll never hear from this agent ever again. No intentions of selling in six months. When they say, I'm going to sell in six months, I'm like, great. What's, what's going on in six months? What's got you thinking about selling in six months? As soon as somebody tells me they want to do something, I'm like, why? What's going on then? What's happening? If I call a Zillow lead and they inquired about this house, I'm like, hey, I see you are looking at this house online. Just calling to check on that situation, see if there's something I can do to help. And then I'm listening. And then they're like, well, yeah, we're looking at it. We like it. Cool. What's got you thinking about buying? I immediately got to know. Because again, guys, this is my mom. This is my dad. This is my brother, my cousin, my best friend from high school. I got to know. I got to know what's going on. But it's like a doctor. A doctor's not going to bring you in and say, oh, your stomach hurts. Okay, lay down right here. Scalpel, split you open and look in there and start doing stuff, right? They're going to start asking questions. They're going to start doing tests. They're going to start diagnosing the situation before they come up with a game plan around how to attack the situation, right? That's what we should be doing as professionals. Okay, you want to buy? Tell me more. What's got you thinking about doing that? Oh, this, that, and the other? Like your, your kid's going to college in six months and you're, you're going to downgrade? You want to be on the water in a smaller house? Just you and the wife now? Awesome. You got to know this stuff or you, you can't help someone do something. You don't even know what they're trying to do. So again, <laughs> go back to the funnel, getting these deals closed. You got to get your communication down, right? Around talking to people like their family. You're here to help them through whatever it is. You got them. Right. And when you can dig into the depths of that and listen, when, when you say why and they tell you why, ask why that. You know, and they tell you why that. Tell, ask why. Keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Don't just don't just play on the surface. You know, a, a, as the one that's going to represent them at the highest level, the way they want to be represented, you got to know the whole story. It's almost like it's almost like a lawyer representing you. Right. He's got to know the whole story. Even the part you don't want to tell them, right? Same thing here. They, 
you got to you got to be honest with me. I got to know with the whole thing before I can really help you. So that's how you get them through, man. Um, is uh, really digging into that, understanding what the true motivations are, the timelines, etc., and then putting together a customized game plan around them and their situation. You know, and then, and then listen, if you've got the back end weekly email in place that you're writing every week, giving your opinions on stuff, not generic stuff, don't let a company write them for you. You, you will lose. You, your, your brand will be demolished if you let a company write an email for you. Go Ricky, ahead, this is great. Yeah, this is great stuff. Um, hey, uh, so talk to us a little bit more about this email. Train us up on this. So like, um, what, what do you put in your email? Uh, do you mix it up every week? Is it the same thing every week? Um, yeah, train us up a little bit on this weekly email and, and keeping people involved or on it. And then also, um, do you just add everyone that you ever come into contact to on this email? F fill us in on, uh, train us up on that. Of course, man. I want every single person ever that I've ever met, that I know, that I've ever talked to, that has even heard of me, maybe people that haven't even ever heard of me, to be getting this email. All right, okay. When you, when you open up your phone, okay, where's my phone? When you open up your phone and you pull up Facebook or Instagram, right? What's the physical motion that you make when you're, when you're, when you're looking at, um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, you doing this? Is this, is this the motion right here? Okay. When you go on your phone and you pull up your email, what's the physical motion that you use as you're looking through your email? It's the same thing, guys. Email is a social media platform. It's the same thing. It's a news feed that they look through like this to see if they see anything interesting that stands out for them to click on. It's the exact same thing. So once you understand that and how powerful it is, because it's a 90% organic reach versus two, three, four, five percent on all the other platforms. And if you can use these platforms to funnel people into this platform where you got them for life, over here, you don't know if you got them for life. Over here, you got them for life. If they unsubscribe, awesome. They don't want to do business with me. That's great. That's my job is to filter through the population and find the 10 to 20 to 30% of people who love me, who want to do business with me forever. The other 70%, I love you too, but you have an agent or you don't like me. That's okay. That This is business. That's why there's so many agents. That that are successful because, um, you know you can't do all the all the work. Uh, let's see, let's see. Hey, gonna... Ricky, can you give us an idea of do you have the same pattern of a weekly email, and if you don't mass produce these, what would the email say every week? If I don't mass produce them, what do you mean mass? Right. Produce? Like you said, don't have your company send those emails. For oh, you. absolutely not. Right. So what kind of content do you put in some of those well, weekly Don, emails? Don, how many buyers did you show in the last week? Um, Five. Okay. Did any of those write a contract or make any offers? Two are about to. Two are about to. Okay. So picture this, an email with a... Uh, a landmark, some kind something that's like people know it's your market, right? Some kind of, right? And then it's got new listings and property search links right there. And then you're like, January market on fire. And then, and then, and then, you know, big headline. And then you write, hey guys, hope you're having a good week. Just want to let you know, I showed five buyers in the last week and two of them are about to make offers. We're still looking for properties for the other three. You know, just keeping you informed on the activity out here that you won't find anywhere else, you know, above are all the new listings in the area. Here's a great deal. I thought you might be interested in have a great rest of your week. Let me know if you need anything. Boom. Now, when you give clients, was that good? Yeah. See, when you give clients inside information about the market that they can't get on Zillow, they can't find on Zillow that Dawn showed five buyers last week and that two might make offers. You can't find that anywhere. Yeah. Even the new agents, you guys have situations that are very interesting to your clients in your database. You just don't know it because you're, you're again, it goes back to you thinking buyers are easier than sellers. 
dude, when you get a listing, after you get a listing, what do you do? You go get another listing. When you get a buyer, after you get a buyer, what do you do? You go show property. Why are you going to pick a client that makes you go to work versus picking a client that lets you then go get another client and then go get another client and then go get another client? And you're sitting here saying buyers are, it's the same thing what I'm talking about here. New agents think they don't have any value to add. Yes, you do. You're on the front lines of the market. You probably got more, you got more, you got more to give than the experienced agents. You just don't even know it because you got all the time in the world. The experienced agents are, are their, their time is so clogged up with doing deals and servicing people. You don't have any deals going on yet. So your, your mind is free to research the market. Your mind is free to, to do all these things that these experience agents don't have time to do that you could add value to, to, the, to the general public and your prospects in your, in your database. You know, there's, there's new agents that say, oh, I'm too new. And there's old agents that say, oh, I'm too old. Well, who's right and who's wrong? It's all up here, man. We're just, we're just putting these, we're just spinning this stuff off in our head. <laughs> like it's the gospel or something, and, and we're lying to ourselves. We don't even know it. All right, on the email. So I just put a, a link in the uh, chat. Where is it? Where the heck did it go? I don't see it. Oh, that's oh, here it is. Bam. Cause... Okay, so let me go there. You can go there and create a free account. When you create the free account... It's at zero to diamond.com. Okay. When you're here, you have all this stuff here. Okay. So this is like a social media platform. We got 8,000 agents here. We just started this two months ago, less than two months ago, six weeks ago. Um, and this bronze uh, area, this is all free right here. So my scripts, email, business planning, this business planning uh, uh, is fire. That's an hour long deal. There's a workbook that goes with it. Okay. But if you go to scripts and email templates right here and you go to email templates right here, weekly email templates. If you go here, there's a training right here, uh, a full training, a screen share, I do an email, answer questions. You need to go watch it. it is really, really good. It explains the whole thing. This is literally how I made a million bucks a year, sold a hundred properties a year as a single agent. But right here, you can see every email. They actually, I still do my weekly email, even though I'm out of production. My dad does the uh, listings and sales. The only part I have in the business still is doing the weekly email. I just, I won't let that go. Um, but you can see every one I did for over a year right here. Uh, you can click on any of these. Let's see if there we go. It's always got a nice high resolution picture, something people can recognize. My market. I've got new listings at the top. And then, you know, condo sales down 25% in August. Average prices, though, are up 9%. And then I write all this. This is nothing can. And then from here down is always the same. Normally, our pictures are there. My computer has some storage. There we go. There's mine. Let's see if I can get dad's. There we go. Um, but anyway, you can go here. Like, I do uh, restaurant giveaways. Reply back to win a hundred dollar gift card. Y'all you know, get a hundred people to reply back. Um, and so I have this four week template system. You can get right here, and that's through Constant Contact. So I have stats of the month. It's plug and play. I have four templates that you can just use and reuse every month. Stats of the month, restaurant of the month, deal of the month, and news of the month. Like development, the building a bridge. You know, there's a concert or festival or whatever. I made it really, really simple because most people try to do the weekly email and they put too much stuff. Like, it's just like you scroll forever. I'd still be scrolling on some of you guys' emails because you put like, just put one thing in there. <laughs> you, you're going to send them another email in seven days. You don't have to get them. With, you don't have to hit them with everything. Hit them with the most important stuff. All right. Um, right. I'll show you guys the back end really quickly of... uh so it looks like you use constant contact as your source to send the emails out. Yeah. 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 It's real user friendly. Um, I yep. got my, I got my templates in there for you guys. Um, but I'll just show you guys the back end analytics real quick. 
just to show you like real numbers. Okay. So like last week, uh, it hits 19,000 people. Um, 7,300 opened it last week, the week before 72, the week before 74, the week before 73, 74, 74, 77, 77, 78, 72, 77, 78. So it, it's always like between 72 and 7,800 people opening it. Not to mention the other 7,700 who saw it in their inbox, appreciated it. That's like that's like people that scroll through your open house on, on Instagram. It's like people that scroll through your open house on Instagram. They don't double like, they don't double click to like it, but they saw it, right? So they see you working. That's called an impression. An impression means they saw it. They didn't necessarily engage. They may or may not have engaged, but they saw it. So when they see your Instagram post that you're at an open house or you got another listing or you're out here making calls or whatever you're posting about and they didn't engage, that doesn't mean that it wasn't powerful. I mean, you guys all look at posts that you like, but you don't actually hit the like button. Same thing. You saw it and you appreciated it and you said, wow, that person's getting after it or working hard or whatever you thought positive about them, but you didn't, you didn't hit the like button because, you know, you don't like every single little thing that you like on social. Same thing with the people. So you got to understand, guys, impressions mean a lot. And we're undervaluing impressions. You know, we're thinking, oh, if they didn't open it, then they we need to take them off our list. No, you don't. You know, you're thinking that if they didn't, like, if you don't get, um, you know, you know, 300 likes on your open house thing, then the, you know, the, the, the thousand people that saw it uh, doesn't care. Yes, they do. They see you working. Just because they don't like it doesn't mean that they don't appreciate the fact that you're out here getting after it. Impressions mean a lot, guys. Engagement is another factor, but it's not the only factor. Does that make sense? I'll put the link right here directly to the four-week template. Rick, you had a quick Listen. question for you. Yeah. Um, so I use Mojo as my dialer of source, and on Mojo, I can also get access to people's emails yeah. with the expired listings, although they don't know me directly. Would you recommend that I input those um, emails into my email campaign as well, or is that frowned upon? Just the ones that you call. Just the ones? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so like if you call 200 people today, only have those 200 people in there. Would you recommend I ask if they'd be purview to it? Like You're, tell you're you telling me that they're, you're telling me you're going to add them in there without talking to them. Yeah. So how are you going to ask them if you didn't talk to them? I meant the ones that I did talk to. Like, well, if you I did talk like to them, you're, gonna, you're not going to act like you have their email because you don't know if it's right or not. It's in Mojo. Okay. Come on. Gotcha. So you're going to pretend like you don't, and you're going to use my scripts, which are right next to the weekly email templates at Zero to Diamond, and you're going to say, hey, uh, matter of fact, let's do a role play, all right? And you're you're what, an expired? Okay, you're you're the property owner. Ring, ring, ring. Nope. Hey, Gaggin. Uh, hey. Hey. Is this Gaggin? Yeah, this is him. Who's this? Hey, Gaggin. Ricky Carruth over here at whatever real estate company in whatever area. How are you doing today? Doing well, man. How are you? Cool, man. Me too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous out there? It's beautiful out here. Yeah, man. Listen, I don't want to take it too much of your time, but I see you were trying to sell this house on whatever road. Um, I, it was on the market. Now it's off. I, you know, what's what's going on with that? Oh, yeah. We, uh, you know, we're just going to get some repairs done on the property, and then we're probably going to relist the property back in the spring market with the same sweet, agent. Sweet, sweet. Do you have an agent you're going to work with on that? Yeah, we're just going to relist it with the same agent. Got you, man. Cool. And who was that, by the way? It was uh, it was Jordan Terrell. Got you. That's a great agent, man. You are in good hands there. I'll tell you what. I'd still love to stay in touch with you if that's okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Why not? Cool. What's a good email? Gantimcino, okay, at gmail.com. So, so you guys got to understand the flow of...
for there. But the point I was trying to make is, is that when I get to the point where they may or may not work with me, they may or may not do a deal today, I'm like, great. Do you have an agent you're going to work with? If they don't, well, listen, I'd sure love to work the opportunity to work with you. Is it okay if I stay in touch? Boom. They say yes, verbal confirmation. Then I'm like, great, what's a good email? I'm not just saying, okay, cool, what's a, what's an email? Or um, don't ever say you're going to send a market report or a weekly email. They will <laughs> they will probably hang up on you. They're, they they get like four from other agents that their company sends out for them, and it sucks so bad that it gives us a bad name for the people that actually make good emails. Um, they don't want another one, right? So um, make it feel like you just want to stay in touch with them directly, personal, personally. Not a bulk situation, right? Um, but even if you have their email there, you still go down that road and ask them what it is. And then you can kind of compare to see if that data is real or not. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I got you. Yeah. And then, uh, and then also in that scenario, see, you know, if your circle prospecting is kind of a different ball game, you know, if within expire where they're fixed, they're like, well, we're going to realist it in the spring. I'm going to go down the road of, you know, why are you guys selling in the first place? I'm going to go down that whole road. Like I was telling you guys, I mean, I would have immediately went that direction. I just didn't want to go there. You know, I wanted to get to the email part to show you guys what that part of the script looks like. Plus, you know, Gagan here might not have been able to come up with some kind of fake reason why he was going to sell in the spring that quick. So I didn't want to put him on the spot either. I appreciate you. <laughs> anyway, that makes so Ricky, sense. If you were, I know you're like really big into the handwritten letters and I've, I've loved it and I've had really good conversations with people. I've had a few listing appointments. Um, I mean, I guess, is that more of like a way to just get people feeling more comfortable and making it feel more warm? Like, would you recommend just calling the people or do you still think like the handwritten letter is the best way to go? Dude, I'm, I'm uh guys, this is real important. I'm posting this YouTube video right here. You have to grab that and go watch that. It's it, it's good. Um, I do a full blown presentation, and it touches on some of what you're asking there. So for me, what I would do is yes, the handwritten letter because handwritten envelope, handwritten a return address, they're gonna open it. Okay, when I make calls, ten percent are gonna answer on average. So if I call a hundred people, I'm gonna talk to ten. I'm going to probably have five great conversations. That's why I want to use a dialer to get through the numbers. But nevertheless, if I call 100 and I talk to 10, um, whereas 40 people open the letter, okay, you guys see where I'm going? The letter's going to hit people that I didn't get on the phone, didn't have their number, et cetera. I'm going to get people to call me. on the, I, I normally get a 5 to 10% callback rate. So when I send out 100 letters, I'm going to get 5 to 10 people call me and say, hey, what's up with this buyer that you have? Um, so that's going to make the phone ring and make people call me, which is what you guys have with Zillow with buyers. I'm just doing it cheaper and more effectively with sellers. Um, and then I would use Red X ad builder to run ads to all the sellers in my market. Whereas they've already, I've already forced them to see me on Instagram and Facebook before I call them. Um, so you, essentially, you can do the same thing you're doing with buyers, with sellers. Handwritten letter makes the phone ring, running ads, and then calling as more of a follow-up call. Hey, it's Ricky the Realtor from Facebook. I sent you a handwritten letter. Like, oh, Rick, what's up? Right? Um, that's what I would do. Yeah, absolutely. No, the handwritten letters have been gold for me so far, so I appreciate that. Um, if you guys go to the zero to diamond.com, see, where is it? Where am I at? Here we go down here in this listing challenge, literally step by step, right? Creating the buyer list, exporting the data, writing the letters, daily routine, conversation, follow-up calls, scripts, the whole nine yards, um, expired list. This was goal. I actually made live calls on this one, the expired script. We have a listing leaderboard. We keep up with everybody's listings. We do prizes every month. So we're competing as a group. We do weekly calls. Uh, to, it's today. It's always Monday at 5 o'clock Eastern. Um, today I'm doing, it's actually right here. I'm doing transition into luxury listings. So I'm going to teach our group how to target the luxury listings, how to approach them, what to hit them with marketing-wise, what to say, how to close them, the whole nine yards. 
So um, everything's right here. Hey, Ricky, uh, Jordan here. I'm, I'm actually in Scottsdale at a mastermind, but uh, I'm the team leader. I'm so grateful for you doing this. This is really solid stuff. I, um, I, a couple questions. One, um, is, is gold bar, like I, I saw that are, are you are part of gold bar? Is that like a, a platform? I, I, I thought there was a guy named like Juan or something in Florida that created that, or, or I just was curious your connection to that. And then two, um, how much of this, uh, of your success with all these strategies comes down to you just having your voice, meaning, uh, like I, obviously there's a ton of strategy and all the things that you're doing, the, 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 the different tactics and the, the emails and the, you know, the handwritten letters, all that kind of stuff. But how much of it comes down to you just being able to be a human and connect with humans, like, and, and not be a weird real estate agent that says weird real estate, real estate things, but actually just connecting people on a human level and building that trust. Is that the key component Yeah, it combined is. with the consistency? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, See, when I when I lost everything uh, when I was in my mid twenties, I made a meal and lost it all, and it was literally because I sounded like a robot. Like it's funny because <laughs> like what you're saying is exactly why I lost everything. I could not maintain my business through the market shift because talking like a robot worked when things sold in a day and you know, the market was on fire. But the only thing that works through any market is actually building a brand around being a real human. Mm -hmm. And um, because when, because here's the facts and what I learned through the crash is that closings happen every day, no matter what. You go back to 2008, look at the data. There were tons of closings happening every day, far less than, than what was happening. And you know, what's so funny is last year we had less closings, existing home sales that we did in 2008. We had, we had fewer home sales last year than we had in 30 years which included mm -hmm. 2008. We we're lower than 2008 last year. But yeah, all of us are still on this Zoom call and still in business. We still closed enough deals to survive. And there's a lot of agents that actually did better last year, which is incredible. Um, which just goes to show you, even in the worst of markets, because that that's his work. That, I mean, it's a 30-year low for number of transactions. How much worse can it get? It could get worse. I mean, sure, it could happen. Um, who knows? <laughs> But but how much worse could it actually get? It's pretty rock bottom. And to be in the situation that we're in where we, you know, it, there's a stat that 49% of agents closed only one deal or less. I don't know if you saw that. I closed one deal or less last year. Literally half the agents out there are not even real estate agents, right? But the other half, you know, um, are. And, um, and w what made it through like a market like last year is treating people like family, you know? Mm -hmm. And like people are like scripts and all this stuff. Yeah, I got script and I know where I want to go with the conversation and I know where I want to end up. And I know my goal is to get them into my weekly email, whether they want to buy or sell or not. And if they do want to buy or sell now, I want to understand why they want to buy or sell and help them buy or sell. That is it. And then you come back to, okay, if this was my mom or dad, what would I say? It's just like, it's like this one. I'll throw this one at you guys. Like if this, if, if you were headed to your mom or dad's house or mom and dad, would you take a listing presentation with you? Would you do a listing presentation mm -hmm. for your mom? I'm going to open it up so I can, I, I want to see your faces. <laughs> would you do a listing presentation for your mother? Okay. Mm -hmm. So then my, mm -hmm. like wh wh when I answered that question for myself, I said, why am I doing listing presentations for my prospects when I want to treat them like they're my mom or dad? And so I, I, and, and I never did listing presentation. I never did a listing presentation. I never did like a PowerPoint or sit down or go through this, go through that ever. I'm walking through like, this is my mom. So I'm walking in and I'm like, Hey, show me the house. Right. We're walking through the house and I'm like, God, this place is incredible. Why in the world would you sell this thing? And then what I want to do is create, conversation that's non-real estate related i want to relate to them on some human level which is really easy to do go ahead ricky how would you coach uh like you clearly have the uh you have an amazing personality you can connect with people you can walk into somebody's house and just say there is no listing presentation yep i, I just want to talk to you about your house how yep. would you coach a new agent on your team that needs a little more structure um is not going to just be able to, to kind of ninja their way through that um, cause I, I'm with you. I don't like, like, I've never been a, a, a flip book guy or a, you know, I just, 
talk to people and it's try to a, understand what they're trying to accomplish. But how would you train a, a newer person that needs that structure? It's a, it's a, it's a testing thing, right? Um, you know, they got to figure out what works best for them. I can tell them what I do, you know, and then they hear what, you know, this other guy does. And then they go on, I mean, they're going to go online and like, you know, if they really want to succeed, they're going to like search on YouTube. They're going to like listen to all this stuff. They're going to hear a lot of things. And what they got to do is they got to test out things in the beginning stages and see what works best. I can't tell you that not having a listing presentation is going to work great for you just because it worked great for me. I could just tell you my experience and what, what I did and why I did it. And maybe you relate to that. Maybe you take it back to your business. Maybe it, it's a light bulb moment for you. Maybe it's not. But at the end of the day, everything works. There's guys that rush it with listing presentations, right? I'm not, I won't, you'll never hear me talk shit about people that do this or people that do that or people that no, even the people that go get buyers, okay, which is what I've been, what I preached about in the beginning, that is fine with me. You know why? Because there's people that make millions off of strictly buyer uh, heavy businesses. And you know what turn, those buyers turn into, right? It gets you to the same place. It just takes longer. So think about this. You have a buyer heavy business. What happens? Those buyers buy properties. Now what are they? Property owners, which is who I want to talk to first. But you you do get there, right? But you, you you represent all these buyers. And if you have your foundation in place with the weekly email, they remember how that how that process and experience went when they bought, they're gonna more than likely list with you when they decide to list in the next two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. And then they're gonna upgrade with you. Um, you know, you, you get to the same place where you're listing a property and you're helping them buy something else. I just want to go ahead and get to the listing the property, help them buy something else today <laughs> versus driving them around in the beginning. I'll let another buyer, I'll let another agent do all that stuff. Uh, and I'll catch them five years from now when they list and want to buy something else. But anyway, what, what, you know, what I say isn't the gospel or the Bible. It's just how I do it, you know? And maybe you guys are late. Maybe you don't. Maybe there's just a little piece of something I do that you can take and really transform your business. And that's what I hope for today. Well, I love that finding your voice is not copying someone else's it's figuring out your voice and finding out how do I say what, what he's saying in my way? Cause that whatever that way is, is going to be the most understandable to the people we're talking to. Absolutely. Um, so I love it. I, I love, I love the fact that you said research, go Google. I mean, that's how I got started. I, I didn't know how to be an agent. So I just lot, I watched a lot of people be agents until I figured out what's my way. Um, is that, so is that gold bar thing yours or uh, I was just curious. Juan's my partner. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I, I, it's a beautiful platform. I, I was looking into it a, a few months ago. Love yeah, it. Juan, Juan and I are partners on that. And we're doing Gold Bar Live in New York on Times Square where they do the uh, Heisman Trophy presentation. We got Ryan oh, cool. Serhan, Josh Altman, Tal Alexander, uh, like all the big boys. So we're, we're doing an event um, February 29th. So it's going to be really, really cool. So yeah, we're just we just want to blow that Gold Bar name up. That's our, that's our baby. You know, that's our coaching program. And uh, I did free coaching for seven years, seven. If you can imagine seven years, a lot of people are <laughs> you know, mad when they don't sell a property in three months. And, you know, I've been coaching agents for seven years for free. Um, so anyway, it's, <laughs> uh, we got all boats rowing in the right direction now with that and everything else that we're doing. I'm basically on tour. I go every week somewhere in the country to speak. Where are you guys at? You guys are all over the place. Uh, we're in Denver. Oh, everybody's in Denver. I uh, don't have anything in Denver right this second. Um, but I'm sure I will at some point. So if I come up that way, you guys need to come out and see me. I'd love to see all you guys and shake your hands and all that good stuff. Any other this questions? Awesome. Any of the I, I really any, any other questions from any of the agents we hadn't heard from? Yeah, I got one last question. Um, how would you, what would you recommend putting out there as like a good lead magnet for social media to I maybe? Would, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Okay. I would just do organic content and maybe run some ads to owners through like Red X uh, Ad Builder or something. But you got to realize you know, having a lead magnet on social media is more of a buyer driven activity and you can do home valuation. You can do seller type stuff on there. But again, Andrew, think about this. 
let me let me just ask you what what is the purpose of that action right let's just break it down what's the purpose of creating a lead magnet on social media what's the goal for you with that capture emails just just strictly capture emails and get them into your email database yeah because I'm, I'm making a lot of organic content now and i've got a good following on the short form stuff and i'm trying to figure out how to capture those emails okay um well that 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 could be good um for me i'm thinking Every lead gen activity comes back to creating a list of people for me to call. I guess creating something automatic that just like throws people into my weekly email could be good. But there again, I'm not, am I capturing their phone number too and calling them? Uh, I guess you could. I mean, I was thinking about something like a link in bio where they can click a moving to Denver thing or, you know, the generic buyer template, seller template, that kind of stuff. But wasn't yeah. sure. Was I mean, dude, creative. I would have something like that, um, you know, just just for fun, okay. you know, like I wouldn't be like, oh, let's optimize this thing. Let's really tweak this thing out. Let's really get this thing to where it's really, you know, cause at the end of the day, I need to be spending all my time in front of people. Right. And I need to go from person to person, to person to person. It's gotta be about volume. You know, we spend a lot of time with like three or four buyers or three or four sellers or something. And we give them all this quality and we kind of ignore the fact that we need quantity of clients now if we want a big business. And like, we can go get it. We're just, again, this is our perception holding us back, thinking that we need to spend all this time on these people. No, you don't. You can spend a 10th of the time on those people and give them the same service and give them the same warm and fuzzies that you really care without spending a hundred percent of that time that you're spending. You can spend 10, 20% of the time and, 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 and go spread that time out across three or four other people at the same time. Got it. Okay. I don't know, man. Um, all that stuff just, uh, um, kind of like if I get something off of like some kind of thing, like what you're talking about, it's just kind of like a bonus. You know what I mean? I, t I tell you, I tell you what I like. And that is when somebody follows me, I DM them right then and try to get into a conversation, really connect with them and get their email that way. Okay. Now that, now that, now that's quality there because you had a conversation, they gave it to you, you connected, you know, okay. Ricky, um, when you DM someone right away like that, are you automating that or are you doing that personally? You could automate it. Um, what are you I, doing though? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't DM them when they follow me. I literally get like five, 600 followers a day. Um, and if I did automatic messages, like uh, there was no way I'd be able to keep up with all the DMs. I literally can barely keep up just from people just DMing. So I'm a little different animal for you. Yes. I think I would put an automated thing in there, but you got to be careful because I like to see something on their profile and then say something about it. You know, like, you know, Hey, thanks for the follow. I see your, you know, you do landscaping, you know, I've got some rental properties around town. You know, I'm also a local real estate agent, you know, nice to meet you. Maybe we can do some business. See if they answer, get in some back and forths. See what you connect with. See if they're looking to buy a house or know somebody who looks to buy a house or whatever. You know, if they're a landscaper, they know a lot of property owners. You know, and like, mm, so just be careful with the automation stuff that kind of takes away from the personable touch. For sure. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, one last question. You talked a lot about expires um if you were starting over as an agent again and you were just working for sell by owners what would your you know 30 second high level strategy be for working fizbos well i mean with fizbos you gotta you gotta get over there and get in front of them in person right really connect with them because everybody's trying to get that listing let them know you don't care about the listing you just want to help them and then follow up every monday call them and say hey how was your weekend did you guys have any showings and you just do it every Monday until they throw the towel in. They're going to throw the towel in, right? 87% of for sub owners throw the towel in. So um, it's about connecting the deepest, deeper than the rest of the agents, and then following up until they throw the towel in. You know, it's all you can do. And you can't take anything at face value. If they say, well, I want to pay a buyer agent 1%, if you got a buyer, just say, great. When can I come see it? Get in front of them, talk to them, work with them. Because when they switch from a for sale by owner trying to save money 
to, okay, we've got to give this to an agent, the commission goes up. It's not going to be 1% anymore. It's going to be regular deal. Yeah, pretty simple, right? Call them, go over there, make the connection, follow up every Monday. How was your weekend? Did you have any showings? You know, how'd it go? And kind of give them a little advice here and there, you know? Give them some value. Anybody else? It's like rapid fire. We're in the rapid fire section of this call. Beautiful. Cool, guys. Well, good to meet you. Um, keep crushing it. Let me know what I could do to help. Um, shoot me a DM on Instagram if you do need anything. I do answer them all. And go to zero to diamond.com. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Ricky, for coming on. I'm going to shoot out all those links you sent us to the team here. So, um, yeah, really appreciate it. Thank you, Alex, for getting them on here and uh, really uh, some really good gold today to help us has a, have a successful year. So let's do it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank it, Ricky. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thank you. See you guys.